Hi, my name is Linda Abraham, and I am the president of Accepted and the moderator for today's webinar. Welcome to Paying for Your MBA, Before, During, and After, to be presented by Zach Hirschfield of Prodigy Finance. Now, before we start, before I even introduce Zach or give you a little bit more information about him, I'd like to, we both would like to get to know um, you, our audience, a little bit better. So I have a, que a couple of questions to, to ask before we get started. A few, a couple of polls, a question. And we're going to use the question window sometimes for your answers as well as your question. So the first question is, where are you folks located? Okay, if you could put city and state if you're in the United States, city and country if you're outside the United States, we would both appreciate it. Okay. Oh, wow, a lot. Denver, Berlin, Germany, Washington, D.C., London, India, Washington, New York City, Germany, Rio de Janeiro, Lagos, Nigeria, Chile, Mumbai, India, Milwaukee, Tallinn, Estonia, uh, forgive my mispronunciation, please, Houston, Moscow, Irvine, I think it's supposed to be Irvine, upstate New York, Irvine, right, yeah, I kind of figured that out. I'm from Los Angeles. Anybody else want to share the location? Uh, we'll see it in a minute, Jack. India, okay, no problem, no problem. All right, New York City, wonderful. Welcome near and far. We have a nice representation of, uh, of Americans, and yes, and Indians here too, that's right. And really, all over the world, South America, Europe, Asia, um, Africa, North America, it's pretty good. Okay, now here's a poll for you. All right, and I would appreciate your participation. Um, when are you planning to start your MBA studies? It should appear right now on your screen. Okay. When are you planning to start your MBA studies? Okay, we have 71%, 76% of having voted. How we, can we, all right, good audience, 81% having voted. And we're going to close the poll now and share the results. So let's see, I got something in the way here. I can't even read my own results. 65% are 2016, 26% are 2017 or later, or, or 2017, and 9% are 2018 or later. All right, so some of you are planning ahead, but most of you, it's much more immediate in 2016 or, or 2017. Okay, good. Next poll, well, and I did share the results, so I'm going to hide it now. And um, next question is, of those applying for 2016, how many of you already admitted? Okay, so please select which one, you know, are you applying? This can be for later ones also. How many of you are actually already admitted? How many are just in the applying stage? And that would include those who are applying in 2017, 2018. So please indicate. Okay. Can we get up the, the percentage a little higher? Right now, applying is obviously winning. But we have, oh, of those 2016, obviously a fair number already admitted. Okay. Let's get it up a little higher. Five, four, three. 2-1 with 73% having voted. I'm going to share the results. Okay, so you have 67% are applying, which kind of fits with the lower poll. But of those for 2016, clearly a very high percentage have already been admitted. Congratulations to all of you who have been accepted. And the last question I have before I actually introduce our guest and speaker is, how much of your expenses do you intend to borrow? Okay. How much of your tuition and living expenses while in school do you intend to borrow? Please select one. And this is really important question, I think, for you, you folks to consider. All right, right now, um, 50 to 99 percent is winning. We have 73 percent of the vote. Can we get it up a little higher? Five. Four, a little higher. Come on, folks. Three, two, one. Okay, great. We have 81% having voted, and I'm going to share the results. And 21% um, are planning to borrow everything. 46%, the plurality, 50 are in the more than half range. 23% are in under half, or 20, 25 to 49%, and 8% less than 25%. And some of you 
are here just in case and you don't even plan to do any. That's pretty good. Congratulations. All right. So feel free to enter your questions in the question window and we'll choose those that have the broadest application and Zach will address them at the end. Now, if we don't get to your specific question, we'll provide several options for you to get answers at the end of the webinar. No matter where you are in this very international crowd, you need to face reality. An MBA is invaluable, but it's also expensive, very expensive. And before you can benefit from the education and the degree, you have to figure out how to pay for it. We've observed here at Accepted that obsessing endlessly about financing your MBA education won't help a thing. <laughs> and ignoring the issue can be absolutely devastating because it means you could get an acceptance and then not have the means to attend. We'd like to recommend a middle ground called purposeful planning for the expense of an MBA education. And that's why we've invited, invited rather, the folks, the folks from Prodigy Finance to present to you today. Now, let's turn to the webinar. Accepted is delighted to host this webinar for Prodigy Finance. Let me just tell you a bit about Prodigy and also about Zach, our presenter. Prodigy Finance was started by three INSEAD MBA graduates who experienced firsthand the difficulties of financing an international MBA. Since they graduated, they have set up a platform to provide reasonably priced loans to international graduate students and above average returns to investors. Our presenter today is Zach Hirschfield. Zach is Prodigy Finance's Student Relations Manager for North America. He was born in San Francisco and, having explored 35 countries across five continents, almost sounds like the people who uh, are attending the webinar, now lives in New York City. Given his extensive travels, it should come as no surprise that he has a degree in international relations from Bucknell University. Zach loves his job and believes it's a great privilege to speak with students from around the world, helping them to reach their goals. Zach, the floor, or should I say the mic and screen, are all yours. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Linda. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are uh, viewing this, uh, this presentation. Um, I'm so excited to be able to talk to all of you. Uh, and uh, thanks for the invitation, uh, Linda, and accepted. Uh, I hope this is going to be really, really helpful. And, You're most welcome. Uh, and uh, for, for, for everything uh, in terms of uh, planning for your upcoming uh, MBA. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into uh, let's get into the presentation. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, a little bit more about uh, about Prodigy. Um, we are an international company. We specialize in community-based student finance for international graduate students. So, it seems like many of you um, are international, um, you are or you're um, domestic in the U.S. and perhaps going overseas for business school or, or another graduate program. Um, we exclusively uh, deal with students just like you. So this is our specialty. This is the, truly the community that we care about because we believe in this borderless uh, idea of student finance that you shouldn't be penalized if you come from one particular country and you're studying in another. We really want to empower and provide opportunities for students like you to be able to uh, rise to the challenge and, and to become uh, become MBAs and, and other graduate uh, degrees. So um, we are lucky to have uh, some great investment from all around the world, um, notably two large uh, global banks as well as um, what makes us a quite an uh, innovative uh, program is that a lot of the financing we actually receive from alumni from the individual investors. Um, as Linda was just speaking about, um, our company was founded by INSEAD grads and actually the, the company first got started and we first started funding INSEAD students with uh, alumni funding from, from INSEAD. So it's a really wonderful program and we've expanded out since our beginning in 2007 uh, from INSEAD to a number of European uh, schools to uh, the UK and now we're at uh, the vast majority of the Financial Times uh, top 100 business schools. So we're really excited to continue uh, to uh, provide funding to all students, uh, 95 plus nationalities across really top universities uh, from around the world. 
And uh, I, I personally am currently uh, calling from uh, New York City, um, but uh, I, I get around to many of the different schools around the U.S. and the world. So um, if uh, I might be seeing you on campus uh, sometime soon. So as as we spoke a little bit about uh, earlier, and, and if uh, any of you were able to read the blog post that I submitted on the accepted blog, um, this this idea of your, your budget and the idea of cost of attendance for business school is extremely important. And I'm sure, as many of you know, and, and I know there are many people from all around the world, the the actual travel and, and everything associated with getting to campus can be quite cumbersome. And so before you uh, start on this journey, it's really important, uh, like Linda was saying, this uh, purposeful planning to be able to uh, think about all the costs associated with, uh, with your studies. So, th so that is, um, that's how you plan to arrive on campus, where you plan to live, uh, will you be able to go to uh, social events, go on trips? A lot of business schools have, have social and academic trips um, that are components of the business school experience. Uh, many of these costs are included in what's called cost of attendance. So if you speak to your Office of Financial Aid, they will give you a specific cost of attendance for your particular program. And this includes tuition, this includes all fees associated with that tuition, uh, health care, etc., um, as well as anticipated living expenses on campus. Um, and so it's really important to get an idea early on of this cost and then trying to figure out um, throughout both uh, years of study um, how, how they plan to pay for it. So I'm curious to know uh, how many people have, have gone on to, uh, to their school's website or or perhaps spoken with a member of Office of Financial Aid um, to get this, this cost of attendance figure. Uh, maybe tell us if, if that was successful, if you had any challenges with that. I'd love to hear more about that particular experience for you. So in terms of uh, considering your funding sources. Once you've uh, come to understand your cost of attendance, maybe uh, you know how much it's going to cost to uh, actually reach, uh, physically reach campus, uh, maybe you plan for, for a few social trips along the way um, during, during your semesters, um, how are you going to pay for this? Um, we at Prodigy Finance, um, we, we want our students to, to really take advantage of all the funding options, not just loans, not just lines of credit or, or however else, every single funding source. So what we've drilled these down to is uh, six options. So uh, personal savings, uh, so that's savings that you have in your bank account or maybe it's in investments that you can liquidate. Uh, there can also be scholarship, so uh, that's actual scholarship, uh, whether it's need or merit-based from the school as well as there are some private scholarships and fellowships um, on offer, such as you know, perhaps a Fulbright scholarship, things like that. There's also company sponsorships. So a lot of uh, students that we work with are lucky enough to uh, be at a company that can afford to pay for some of their, their school, um, whether that's at a particular percentage of tuition or maybe it's for living expenses. Um, but, but that's also something to consider if, if you have the option. And, and please, if you're at a, at a company that you think I might be able to sponsor you, um, ask them and see what they, uh, they have on offer. It could be uh, of much value to you. The other option is, um, is asking friends and family. So a lot of, um, a lot of students use this, use um, uh, any, any type of friend or, or family member that they feel comfortable with asking to see if they would be able to sponsor them um, for a small percentage of their, uh, of their tuition. Um, once you, what, what I always advise my students is once you've ex exhausted these four options, often these are non-debt funds, so they're, they're funds that you don't need to immediately repay, repay or uh, funds that um, you know, don't have an interest rate attached. There may be some gap between cost of attendance and what, and what you're able to cobble together uh, with these other four sources. This is where a loan can come in. So this is um, where you can consult uh, maybe it's a bank in your home country, maybe it's 
a, a particular resource that your school has, or maybe it's a private uh, community-based lender uh, like Prodigy Finance. You uh, can come to Prodigy, you can uh, create an application, and we'll, we'll be able to go over your budget with you and, and see exactly how much you need and how much we'd be able to, to offer you as, as funds. So, and, 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 and I just uh, want to let everyone know that once again there will be a Q&A session after this, so if you, if you have any uh, burning questions, please feel free to write them down and uh, we'll be sure to get to them uh, near the end. Uh, but in terms of how Prodigy actually works, let's say you have um, some non-debt sources uh, um, that you can use for your, uh, for your MBA, but you need a little bit extra to fill that gap. Um, I, I know in the poll there were some that were saying, oh, I, I would like 100, I would like 50 to um, 200 or, or a little bit less. Um, if, there is a little, if, there, if there is some, you can come to Prodigy and fill out an application. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And we ask for a number of different uh, points uh, and, and criteria in terms of um, where, what's your academic uh, experience, uh, history like, what's your work experience, um, your previous salary, uh, more background on you, where are you from, where have you lived uh, recently. Um, we also ask for personal and professional references. All this application is really trying to do is it's a, for us to better uh, get to know you a little bit better and so we can make an informed decision uh, in our credit assessment model. Now, our, our credit assessment model is, is extremely unique in that it allows us to take all these data points together and uh, we input that into our model and the output is a loan affordability score. Now this loan affordability score, we're able to communicate that to you and say, uh, uh, you're uh, this particular student uh, with this application going to this school, we believe that you can reasonably afford this amount of loan at this particular interest rate. Um, we provide ourselves, we, we pride ourselves on being a conservative lender, so um, it is never our goal and we, we never uh, will overburden the student by, uh, by giving them more than we can reasonably believe that they can pay back. Um, so uh, th this, is a, this is a really great assessment model and, and one that uh, allows us to offer these loans um, without a cosigner or without any collateral attached, um, which is a really, really nice feature uh, for international students. Uh, furthermore, you'll, you'll uh, if you are accepted under our model and you accept that, that loan amount and interest rate, I'll get into that a little bit later, but we'll ask for, some provide, uh, for you to provide some supporting documents, and then uh, we'll, we'll end up sending the, the loan uh, on your behalf to the uh, particular school that uh, you're going to. We always just first funds directly to the university, um, and then uh, if there are any funds above tuition, the university will itself transfer uh, you funds for living expenses. There is a grace period of the entire study period plus six months after graduation. So uh, you will not pay anything um, until six months after graduation. Interest will accrue during that study period. However, you will not be asked to repay anything um, until then. So in terms of uh, maximum loan size, a lot of students ask me, um, hey Zach, how, what's the most I can get? So this, this will determine, uh, or this will be determined by um, the particular, particular school you're, you will be attending, but for the most part, um, taking into account, uh, let, let's say, um, schools in the United States, business schools in the United States, we uh, have a threshold of 80% of cost of attendance. So depending on whether you're, you're, the living expenses might be extremely high in a, in a particular campus, so that, that could either be slightly below or slightly above cost of tuition. But we always uh, assess students on that cost of attendance figure, and it's 80% is the, the maximum that we would be able to, uh, to lend. Um, now, not every student will qualify for this total amount. Um, our, uh, our average loan size is around $40,000 um, for, for the one year. 
Um, so how, how we break it down is there's um, we give you a loan for your first year and then a loan for your second year. So the average is about forty thousand um, dollars U.S. dollars that is, and uh, but but it is possible to qualify for eighty percent. Um, but we, you would you would just have to uh, create your application, submit it, and then we would assess you um, on the various characteristics of your application. So now getting into rate, we discussed loan amount, but how about the rate? Um, we uh, always uh, send our send our students um, the total uh, rate of interest, which includes uh, U.S. LIBOR and a fixed interest rate. So um, the the range of those fixed interest rates would be from 5.25 percent to 9 percent. Um, usually it's somewhere somewhere in the middle, but it all depends on on how your application is assessed in our model. And that inter that fixed interest rate will always be tied to to the variable of three month U.S. LIBOR. Now that is, this is dependent on the U.S. federal funds rate. Um, it will ch change quarterly, um, so each quarter uh, that your interest will accrue, um, it may change depending on uh, how much that U.S. live board number is uh, during that three-month period. So students will ask me, do I need a cosign or an A? And, and as I mentioned uh, before, we really understand the, uh, the real issue that students can have, especially international students going abroad, um, to get a US-based cosigner or a guarantor or provide uh, some sort of collateral for their loans. It can be extremely difficult. And we built this system to be able to capture and to be able to um, to provide loans for these students that cannot access those those pieces. So we do not accept any co-signers, guarantors, or collateral. Um, unfortunately, if you can't, if you are lucky enough to be able to uh, get a co-signer, a uh, domestic co-signer, that still will not um, provide you any rate discounts or help you in your application. Um, to be fair for all students across the board, we, we treat everyone uh, similarly and uh, do not provide any, um, any incentive for co-signers or collateral. And once again, this, this predictive uh, scorecard model, this risk assessment model that we use, uh, assesses each student individually. So you as a student, we look at your story, we look at where, you, where you're coming from, where you're going in terms of uh, the school you're going to, and then we can reasonably project uh, what you can afford in the next uh, 7, 10, 15 years, um, depending on, on your, your loan agreement. I, I, I'm curious, um, maybe in, in, the, uh, in the comments section you can, you can write down, I'd, I'd love to hear um, some stories from, from students who have tried, who have looked into uh, some uh, some options uh, in their home country. Perhaps um, you come across uh, loans, but you need a domestic cosigner, you need a guarantor, you need to put uh, some sort of land or family's house up for collateral. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if you could share maybe some of your experience in that, and if that has affected um, your your thinking in terms of your your budget. Anybody want to share a story? I can. If you put it in the question window, I can. I can uh, read it for everybody. Anybody have any difficult, or maybe Zach, while they're writing, you, do you have a story that you could tell based on the experience of some of the people you've worked with? Well, look, I'm, I talk to students all the time. A lot of um, a lot of our students actually come from India, um, and I've, I've talked to um, many students who, who have found Prodigy as a as a last minute resort because they were they were about to get stuck in a uh, in a loan where it was a 15 15 percent interest rate where they had to put their family's home up for collateral. Now that I can't imagine in in that situation putting your family in that position um, must be incredibly stressful and incredibly taxing on them. Um, so I, I heard this this similar situation from students all the time. Right. And they're incredibly grateful. Um, that they can have this property loan without a cosigner or, or collateral. 
Well, Anaruda shares, um, in India it is mandatory to provide some guarantee if we apply for a loan. The rate is also quite high um, in the 12-13% range. Yeah. Um, Anybody else want to share a story? I, I have some questions also that have been that have been posed. Um, do you want to wait with the questions or or take a few? Sure. Is, if there's a particular question now that might be might be pertinent, we can certainly ask, answer one. All right. Um, Pankaj asks, how would your interest rates compare to interest rates provided by U.S. banks to U.S. citizens with cosigners? Or so um, certainly it is. Um, if, if you are able to um, get a U.S. cosigner and be able to qualify for an American bank, um, that that usually will be lower than an interest rate from Prodigy. Um, when I always tell my students when they're when they're shopping around and looking, I want I want you to do the best for your particular situation. If you are able to get that cosigner, uh, absolutely you should go for that. If if in fact that rate is lower. Um, we're here for students that can't, uh, can't, aren't able, um, or, or um, in a good enough situation to be able to um, get that cosigner, or, or don't want to put up collateral for that particular loan. Um, but, but I, but I always, I always do recommend for my students please shop around. Oftentimes, Prodigy is the is the lowest interest rate. Uh, but sometimes there's a, there's a better offer. I want you to go with what is best for your own personal uh, financial standing. Sounds good. All right, should we keep going? I think so. All right, here Fine, we go. Says thank you. Absolutely, happy to help. Okay. So um, another part, um, you know, in this line of thinking of of your budget throughout the year. So you done some before planning. Um, your your either accepted or applying, you've got your understanding, your own financial background. During school, I think it's really important to keep track of those finances um, that you're, you're incurring throughout the year because the, these uh, costs of living and things, they can often be uh, projections or they can be sort of anticipated or maybe just a conservative amount. So you really want to keep tabs on what you're spending for social events, what you're spending on food, other living expenses. Um, perhaps there, we, we deal with a lot of students um, in, in, in countries like Brazil, uh, in Russia, where they've had a, uh, a lot of um, home currency fluctuations, whether it's the Brazilian real or, or the ruble. Um, really keep tabs on, you know, is your savings back in a, um, in, in a, in a Russian or Brazilian bank or somewhere else? Um, this is going to directly influence um, your spending ability and your financial standing in the U.S. So really keep tabs on that. Keep tabs on your your credit rating. So are you opening up a, uh, um, a credit card or, or do you have a credit card back home that you're using? Make sure you're you're constantly keeping tabs on, on the fact that you have good credit and you want to maintain that throughout uh, throughout the process. So as you're in, in your first year, let's say, uh, you come to the realization that, you know, I'd actually, I, I kind of, uh, I, I didn't, didn't anticipate uh, the cost of living to be to be this high, uh, and I, I should have borrowed more than I could have. Right? You know, however else you want to you want to be able to uh, get the funds. But um, if you come to that conclusion, and, and the conclusion is that you want to borrow a little bit more, you can with Prodigy what's called get what's called a top up loan. So if you already have a a uh, a loan from Prodigy to start the year, and let's say in January or right now in February, uh, you realize, oh shoot, you know, I need an extra ten thousand dollars, an extra fifteen thousand dollars to see me through the end of the year. Um, we can absolutely do that um, if there is room in your uh, in your eligibility and qualification in our model. Um, also, um, you're going to want to think about um, your summer internship as well. For MBA students, summer internships are, are crucial and vital in, in your job prospects um, upon graduation. So think about um, you know, how much will you uh, reasonably be paid in, in your summer internship, what will the cost of living look like there. Um, these are all things to think about, including uh, will I need more funds for year two, maybe in year two, I'm talking to a lot of students right now, 
and there are a lot of social trips. Maybe you go on a trip, if, if you're on the East Coast, you go to the West Coast, uh, explore Grand, the Grand Canyon, or you go to South America, or wherever it else is um, there. You want to make sure you're taking advantage of all those extracurricular activities in, at your MBA. Um, so, so make sure you have enough funds to be able to take advantage and really enjoy um, the experience uh, thoroughly. Um, and uh, actually, one more thing that I um, should add on this is um, a great way to um, think about how, um, how much you're going to be spending. Speak to a, uh, a current student that's there. Reach out to, maybe it's, uh, if you're an Indian student, uh, reach out to the um, Indian Business Club or if you're from uh, Argentina, the Latin American <laughs> Business Club, and speak to some students there and get their idea on, you know, how much really does it cost to live in this particular city or, you know, how many social trips do you guys take and is it really important to be a part of all those? They can give you a really good indication of, of how much uh, you're going to need above and beyond what uh, what the Office of Financial Aid is, is officially advising you for. So let's say you you get through the two years, you've done very well, and, and um, you're 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 you graduated. Now, how does it work in terms of repayment? So this is a, a, a sample, a representative example of, of a particular prodigy loan. So like I said, the, the average loan size is about $40,000. Let's say that you, know, you have the interest rate of uh, 7.5 plus three month US LIBOR. We'll also give you um, an, an APR, which I'll go into a little bit um, in, in a little bit later. Uh, but this APR is, is a way for you to compare all fees um, associated um, with the, the interest rate, so you get a full idea of how much you're going to be borrowing. Um, in terms of administrative fees, um, we do charge a fee uh, before the loan is dispersed, um, but this, this charge is actually not paid up front, but it's actually amortized. It's, you add, we add it to the total loan amount, so overall you'll be paying a total of, of $41,000. Um, and I get that from $1,000 is 2.5% of the total loan amount. We'll give you a loan duration. So uh, that's 10 years um, is, is, our, is our standard uh, loan terms. Um, and that will be um, plus um, the grace period of six months. So that repayment will start, uh, like I said, after the grace period, which is study period plus six months. Um, and then you'll, you'll get monthly statements um, to figure out how much you'll be able to repay monthly um, and also overall how much you'll be paying. I do want to note that um, there are no penalties for early repayment. So when I say um, that our loan terms are 10 years, a lot of students actually take advantage of, of uh, paying it off in bulk payments so that they actually will be reducing their overall interest and total amount owed to Prodigy um, over the lifetime of their loan. So if you can pay it off in seven years, you won't be paying off that extra interest of, of, the, of those extra three years that were on your, your loan terms. You'd be owing less money overall. So I really recommend students um, who are currently in repayment, um, if they get a bonus or, or a lump sum of money, really pay down that, uh, that uh, loan so you'll be saving on the interest costs uh, further down the line. Now, in terms of APR, um, I said I was going to go into this a little bit later, and uh, this is a really important number. So this is the annual percentage rate, um, and this is not this is really important. It's, it's not the rate that interest accrues every month, but it includes those uh, those fees and anything associated with the total uh, loan cost. So so it's really your your your. Uh, getting a number of what is the annual cost of borrowing for this particular loan. The reason this is important is because you can use APR to compare across a number of different uh, loan providers. So some loan providers will give you a great interest rate up front, but there may be some hidden fees or uh, prepayment uh, penalties associated with, with the loan. Um, so I really urge my students um, to take a look at the APR and compare that uh, when you are shopping across um, different different uh, different loan options. 
And once again, um, no prepayment penalties whatsoever. Um, so you can pay bulk payments. We are often very flexible in terms of um, the standard is monthly payments, but if you'd like to uh, pay the uh, um, pay uh, quarterly or uh, do a lot of bulk payments that, that can um, really uh, make your life a little bit easier down the line. And in terms of repayment methods, um, we use uh, TransferWise, we use WorldPay, we use a number of different methods um, for you to be able to repay. Um, and I actually want to ask a question now. Do you currently use any, uh, any uh, foreign exchange uh, vehicles for you to repay uh, maybe it's friends and family or repay any loans right now. Um, I'd really love to hear some some uh, some methods outside of TransferWise or WorldPay um, that we might be able to look into and, and help students like you uh, to uh, to repay repay easier. Any other payment methods that you use? Please list them in the in the question window. And pay, payments method. Payment methods other than those that Zach just mentioned? Or are those pretty much what you use for, for making international payments? Apparently those are that's what they use. I'm not getting any others. Well, pay are quite, um, oh no, I do have quite PayPal. Somebody says PayPal, Western Union. So unfortunately, um, we've been in talks with PayPal and, and they they have a clause where you can't use PayPal for repayment of loans. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, we love that that service. We love the user experience of that, and we're working hard to be able to from the, potentially provide PayPal in the future. But at the moment, uh, it seems uh, to be not feasible. I'm uh, I'm Rita mentioned Transfast and X O O M. I'm not sure if that's Zoom or Zoom or how that's pronounced. Yes, I've heard. I've I've actually heard of Zoom. And um, I'm not sure if we currently have any students using that method, but that's good. What's the what was the other one? Transfast. Another one is Remitly. R E M I T L Y. Remitly. Great. Um, and then uh, Anuruddha mentioned I C I C I Euro transfer to India. Wonderful. And somebody else mentioned Western Union money transfer. Great. Well, these are wonderful. Thank you so much um, for those for those contributions. All right. Well, this is uh, this is the last closing out slide before we get to Q and A. But I really wanted to bring us back to the sort of overall vision of, of project finance. And if you're able to get a loan from us, if you're able to to join us, um, we're really building this wonderful prodigy community of students like you who are uh, high potential, high earning, uh, really smart students um, to be able to uh, create this great community over the long term. So we're working with um, students like you all the time. We're working with clubs on campus. We're, look, we're working with um, them as, they, as, as you become alumni and then also with alumni networks to be able to leverage them for, um, for the opportunity to invest in students just like you. Um, we're working with schools directly. Um, we really think this is an incredible opportunity um, for schools to increase uh, their student body diversity and to attract great, uh, great students like yourselves. Um, and so we we uh, we have great relationships with admissions offices and office of Finan financial aid all across um, the top schools around the world. Um, so this is just a really wonderful. Um, community that we're building, and uh, I'm so excited for for you to uh, to learn more and and to potentially become part of that community. Um, so um, with that, um, I'll hand it back over to Linda. And we can go over some some burning questions that you have um, mm -hmm. after this. Um, if you have any further questions at all, feel free to um, use my contact information anyway. Uh, mobile phone, uh, Skype, email. Um, I'd love to uh, get in touch with you. Okay, Zach, thank you. This was this was fantastic. Very informative, very well laid out. Thank you so much. Um, we do have questions. I'm going to get to, to them in a, in a minute, questions from the applicants. But in the meantime, Zach and I have a couple of questions for you, our audience. The first one is, and this should be coming up on your screen now, would you consider, well, actually, that's the wrong one. Let's try the other one first. 
Um, I'll let's do this one since it's open. Would you consider using Prodigy Finance to fund your studies? Yes or no? Just consider it. Would you consider it? All right. Yeses are winning overwhelmingly. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else want to vote? We're at 74%. Can we get it up to 80? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 92%. Let me share this. Zach, made your day. 92% said yes, they would consider Prodigy. 8% said no. It's probably those people who don't think they need to borrow any money anyways. Okay. Um, and the last poll is, hold on a second. Um, pro besides Prodigy Finance, do you have other student loan options? Um, please let us know what you think. All right, 50% have voted. Anybody else? Let's get it up. 65%, 67%. Can we get it up over 70%, even over 80%? You guys getting tired? Five, four, three, two, one. I guess some of you don't know. 69% having voted. I'm going to share the results. Um, we have 76% saying yes, they have other options. 24% said no, but again, almost, I don't remember what the number was, it was 90-something percent said that they would definitely consider Prodigy. So, Zach, again, you did a great job. Now, let's start at, Let's start focusing on the questions, okay? All right, we have some really good ones here. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, would Prodigy Finance help U.S. students with bad credit scores or bankruptcies on their record? Thanks for the question. So um, in terms of um, uh, bad credits or any bankruptcies, um, we, do take, um, we do take all that into account in terms of your application. Um, so while I don't, I don't want to rule it out and say that um, having having that on your record would completely um, negate any possibility of, of getting a loan from Prodigy. Um, I, I would say that it would it, that it would um, that it would slightly affect you. Now it might slightly affect you in terms of the rate you'd be paying or the total loan amount that we think you could um, borrow. Um, as I said earlier, we. We are a conservative letter, lender. We pride ourselves on that because we don't want to put students in a situation where they couldn't reasonably pay back. Now, we, we understand, we, we take the time to get to know um, the students in terms of their individual, uh, their backgrounds, um, but it certainly would, your credit history um, will, uh, will factor into, into your decision. So I, I would just recommend uh, for you to create an application and complete one. Um, so that we could get back to you. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is that um, if you do, um, uh, when you do submit your application, we will get you a, a loan decision within two business days. Um, so it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill out, and then all you have to do is wait, wait two business days max, and we'll be able to uh, get you a decision. And if, if you're declined for any reason, um, that does not affect your credit so that you have no no reason not to apply at this point. Okay, great. We have a lot of questions, so I'm going to try and run through them as fast as I can. Um, Somak asks, as the U.S. dollar to Indian rupee conversion rates change very frequently, so I need to pay the loan amount as per the conversion rate, which was at the time of taking the loan, or as per the conversion rate, which was at the time of repaying the loan. So all of our loans are in um, in U.S. dollars um, it, for, for for most schools. If you're going to school in um, in uh, Europe or in the U.K., we occasionally will send those loans in pounds or euros. Um, so in terms of the repayment process, you'll be repaying that total dollar amount um, depending on you know. Whatever that is currently. So if you, if you let's say you go back and um, you you move back to India, um, you you need to repay 
um, you know, using your your rupees or if you have um, dollars or another currency, you'd be using that. But it would it would be in that in the currency of of your um, of your loan, which will most likely be dollars. Okay, and Aruda, who is, had at, told us about her experience with, or how difficult it is to get a loan in India, asks, is there any kind of guarantee? What is the guarantee that the money is going to be repaid? And I said, do you mean like collateral? She said, yes, you know, something like that. Is there any collateral required, any guarantee required other than the student's, you know, uh, good name and past history? Of, uh, of repaying debt? So there is no collateral, no cosigner whatsoever. Okay. Um, we do this um, as, a, as a courtesy and we want students to be able to um, be in the best position to attend school um, because I know and, and our company as a whole knows that it can be extremely challenging to get an international loan without a cosigner, without collateral. Um, we are doing this Partly on our good nature, on our good nature, because we want students to be able to succeed. But also, we have this credit assessment model that is incredibly sophisticated, that takes into account all the different points in your application, and allows us to define a loan ability score, a loan affordability score, excuse me, for you. Um, so, in in terms of um, you, in in terms of us trusting you, it really is. Um, really trying to figure out who you are as a person. We will ask for uh, proof during the application process of what you said in your application. So we're good natured, but we can't trust you all the way. We do need to um, do credit report checks and, and to get proof of savings and proof of scholarship and all these things so that we know for certain that you'll be able to afford school um, and that reasonably you'll be able to repay. Okay. Um, Jay asks is if you offer loans for programs other than MBA, other graduate degrees. We do. Um, actually, so, so since uh, 2007 until uh, late last year, 2015, we only did business school students. Um, that, was our, that was our bread and butter. That was our specialty. Uh, but now we've seen a lot of demand for other, uh, other graduate degrees. So, so right now we are... Um, providing loans for, um, and this is in, in the United States, LLM degrees, so professional uh, law degrees at uh, top uh, U.S. law schools, um, engineering programs at top engineering programs in the U.S., as well as masters in public policy and masters in public administration. Um, okay. So if you are interested in any of those degrees, please send me an email. I'd be happy to speak with you further about it. Um, but it's a relatively new program for us, but we're really excited for this new chapter at Prodigy and, and to be allowing more and more students around the world to be to be studying, not just business, but, but other top uh, professional degrees. Okay, great. Vignesh asks, when does the repayment start? Is it after graduation or after we get a job post-graduation? Absolutely. So um, repayment starts six months after graduation. Um, so a little bit more clarification on the grace period. It is the entire study period. So that's um, your uh, first year, um, your second year if it's uh, if it is a two-year program, and then six months after graduation. That next month you'll be getting your first uh, first bill, your your first repayment. Uh, repayment bill, which will be electronic, everything will be electronic, um, via email and via your dashboard, um, and you'll start repaying, uh, repaying that. Okay, question from Sithan Dazali, and I apologize, I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation there, but if I'm an international student with a social security number, am I eligible for Prodigy Finance Loans? So you, um, th this might be in terms of a, a social security for um, temporary residency, something like that. Maybe uh, that. Probably, I think, yeah, I, I think you have to be a permanent yeah. resident, don't you, to, to get a social security number? So it, it depends. Some, uh, in some instances, if you have um, a visa, like a, to yeah, a work visa or something, sure, right? Um, yeah, that you, the. Uh, the federal government will offer you a social security number. Um, you can, um, but we do have restrictions on 
um, on residency in the home country of study. Um, so you have to be um, living in, or you have to be, um, you, you cannot have lived for three or more years um, working in, in the U.S. Or, or in the home country of study. Um, to be able to uh, qualify for a loan. So let's say you, you've been studying for two years in the U.S. and then you were working for one. You would, if you have a social security uh, number, but are actually your nationality and home country is, is uh, an international country, another country, um, you would still qualify for, for a property loan. Okay. Um... Let's see. Besides taking a loan from Prodigy, can I take a loan from banks for the balance amount of tuition fees? Because I think you said that, that Prodigy would lend up to 80%. Um, what about the other 20%? Are you assuming that the student has that money either from family or savings? or That's correct. So, so in terms of how we assess uh, each student, um, the loan amount that we uh, – give as, as, as what we call conditional approval. So that's, that's approval of a loan provided that you submit documentation that, that is proof of what you say in your application is, is true and correct. Um, once we give you that conditional approval, um, you'll be able um, how should I say? Um, um, Could you uh, repeat the question? Should I repeat the question? Yes, please. Okay. Besides taking a loan from Prodigy, can I take a loan from banks for the balance amount of tuition yeah. fees? So you had, I think, said that Prodigy will loan up to 80%, right, of, of the mm -hmm. expected cost of tuition plus living expenses. What about so the this, other 20%? You. So this conditional approval is based on um, the fact that you, that you will not take on any other uh, loans, which we call debt funds. Um, so, as I as I went over it in the in the earlier slide of the different types of uh, funding sources that you can that you, you can provide in your in your budget to be able to, to to show us that that you can afford cost of attendance, the full cost of living, and etc. Um, you'll have to um, that loan offer is predicated on the fact that you won't take any non-debt funds. And this is because the credit assessment model that we use determines, is trying to determine how much total debt burden that you can afford. And if you take debt from someone else, that eats into um, our projection of how much total debt you can afford. So if you came to us and said, oh, I'm actually getting a loan from someone else, that would affect your loan with Prodigy, and we'd have, we would have to reduce your uh, total Prodigy loan amount. Got it. Okay, thank you. That was clear. Now, Gaurav asks, is it negative if the applicant already has a home loan, however, with an excellent credit history? So it is not, um, it is not negative. Um, we, we will um, ask each student to provide a credit report. Um, from their home country. So if you do have good credit history and you have a home loan or a mortgage, um, certainly let us know, but that should not, um, that should not uh, significantly affect um, your application. If anything, um, if you're paying that mortgage off uh, on time, um, that should improve your credit history um, and your credit score, so um, it could potentially uh, help your application. Okay. Prakash asks, I've got an admit from Brigham Young University, the Marriott Business School, but I don't see its name on the Prodigy Finance List. Can you confirm or check, or do you know, if you provide loans to that university? Yes, absolutely. So um, congratulations on your admittance. So yes. this is actually um, one of the two um, American schools that just jumped into the top 100 Financial Times ranked schools. Um, so we actually do, in fact, um, lend to those students. You would actually, if you sign up for Prodigy, you would actually be the first Marriott student that we've, we've provided. Um, if, if you would like to speak with me further, I can um, set that, uh, that school up on our website so that you can, you can apply right away. Um, it's, uh, it's actually, so the reason why um, 
we, we can now provide loans to merit is due to funding restrictions on our end. So some of the funds that we're able to allocate um, to you as a student come from sources where they, they say, uh, Prodigy, we want you to only lend to the top 100, that, and that has to do with their particular risk model and all that. All that. Um, but, but in terms of uh, the actual um, the actual schools that we can fund, um, they're all in the top 100 Financial Times ranked, and yes, now uh, Marriott is in there, so we'd be happy to, uh, to uh, speak with you further and, and to have you submit an application. Great. Um, okay, Devesh asks, is the maximum amount of the loan determined according to the different universities? It's different tuitions, different cost of livings. That's correct. So um, each, the, the maximum amount is based on 80% of cost of attendance. Now, cost of attendance will vary depending on uh, the school you're going to. So let's say you're going to a school, let's say it's uh, Columbia Business School versus, um, let's say it's um, Olin in, uh, in St. Louis. Those, those cost attendance figures will be less, not, not just uh, based on tuition, but based on the cost of living in New York City versus cost of living in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, so you, the maximum loan will be that 80% of whatever that particular school's cost, cost of attendance uh, is. Okay, great. Now, um, you I have one more question I'm going to take, and that is, can Prodigy Finance's loan be used to refinance a current student loan? And this is from Ka. Yes, so uh, we get a lot of questions about refinance currently, and at the moment we do not have um, a refinance product available. Um, this is something that we're working on, and um, I would recommend checking back uh, later this year, in 2016, um, about refi with Prodigy. Um, so unfortunately, we can't help you at the moment, um, but in the future, I, I fully expect that we'll have um, a refinancing uh, option available uh, for students. Great. Zach, this has been fantastic. Thank you for such an informative webinar. And thank you all to the, the members of the audience for attending, giving us your time and your attention, your questions, your answers. If you have a question that wasn't answered here yet, you can post it on Accepted's blog at accepted.com slash PF, as in Prodigy Finance. Again, if you have a question that isn't answered here, please go to accepted.com slash PF. Zach and I will be checking there and we'll, we'll respond to any questions that we can uh, over there. And I think, Zach, you gave out also your personal contact information so people can, uh, can contact you that way also. As you leave, please take a minute to complete our very short survey. We value your feedback. We really use it going forward. You can review this webinar early next week online. We will send out an email letting you know when it's available. Um, and if you want help with your application, before you actually get in, into school. Accepted offers myriad resources to help you with your application essays, resume, interview prep, or just provide experienced advice. You can find all the above at accepted.com slash MBA. Thank you so much again for coming, for being here. Thank you, Zach. Again, it was a wonderful webinar, and best of luck with your applications and with getting the money to finance it. Zach, I want to share with you that the, the feedback coming in, thanks for the presentation, very informative, lots and lots of thanks from the people who've been listening to first the presentation and then to the answers to your questions. Well, thank you so much, uh, Linda, and for everyone attending. Um, have a wonderful rest of the day or, or evening, wherever you are, and I look forward to speaking with you uh, further in the future. Take care, everybody.